Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Japan, but we've got a little bit of a special review today. This is my Hugmanay 2019 review, or for those of you who aren't Scottish or familiar with Scotland, the New Year's Eve beer review. So we've got a brewery who were actually the first Japanese craft brewery that I ever discovered. I got their beers back in Scotland about, you know, five and a bit years ago now. But for this one, it's a beer that I have seen fairly often when I've been over here in Japan but just never got around to reviewing but it's supposed to be pretty damn nice actually. So for this review then we're going to return to Ibaraki Prefecture and we're having a taste of another beer from Kiyuchi's Hitachino Nest Beer range. This one is the Ancient Nipponia and it comes in at 8% ABV. Now either this beer is a Belgian blonde or it's an Imperial Pills. I know that there's been two versions of this beer. I'm not sure exactly which one this is, but the interesting thing about it is that it is brewed using Kaneko Golden, which is a really old type of Japanese malt, and it also uses the wonderful Soriachi Ace Hop as well. But like I said, I've seen this beer around quite a few times, but I've just never actually bought it and got around to reviewing it. So this year, I just thought, you know, I'm going to get one of these and review it for you on New Year's Eve. And here we are now. But as I say, being quite a long time since I've had a beer from these guys and hopefully they are as good as I remember. Nice big oily um, smooth beers from what I remember of the Hitachino Nest range. But cool to return to this brewery. This is another one that I picked up at liquor shop Asahiya in Taishibashi Yamaichi here in Osaka. Uh, Koji and Rika are my Japanese beer dealers so make sure you check them out if you get the chance. You'll find the Facebook link in the description below. Great selection of Japanese beers including some of the Hitachino ones. And these guys are actually releasing some kind of experimental beers every so often now as well so definitely worth keeping that keeping an eye on the brewery social media and stuff like that as well so um yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then an eight percent beer with an ancient japanese malt and japanese hops as well sorry actually it's a really lovely big citrusy hop from what i remember so um yeah as is usual with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Hitachino Nest before. I'll see about adding some more in the fairly near future because it's been too long since I've reviewed one of these beers. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about the Kiyuchi Brewery and Hitachino Nest. So as I kind of mentioned earlier these guys are from Ibaraki Prefecture which is to the north of Tokyo from a city called Naka to be specific and the beers the Hitachino Nest beers are brewed by the Kiyuchi Brewery which was founded back in 1823 by Kiyuchi Gihei whose family had been collecting rice uh, for a number of generations actually but the, the rice that they were collecting was as a tax for the Tokugawa family who were one of the old imperial families. But the brewery basically started with the idea of using the remaining rice stocks to make sake and so Kiyuchi Brewery started as a sake brewery as have a number of other Japanese craft breweries or you know they've basically started brewing craft beer a little bit later on. But Kiyuchi was a good friend of Fujita Toku who was one of the activists in the revolutionary Tokugawa movement which really revolutionized Japanese politics. I mean for a long time Japan's doors were closed and it was only at the Meiji Restoration that things, you know, really started to open up a little bit and Japan very quickly went from being a very kind of feudal and tribal country, if you like, well, not so much tribal, but a feudal country to being, you know, one of the most modern countries in the world, actually, the most modern of all the Asian countries anyway. But apparently, um, Kiyuchi named one of his sakis Kikusakari as a respectful gesture to the emperor. Um, but Mikio Kiyuchi inherited the brewery after the Second World War in 1950 and this was a time where the Japanese economy was really starting to kick off and grow rapidly again. So the sake industry was growing very, very quickly at that time because, you know, increasing demand, people had more money and stuff like this. But the Kiyuchi Brewery was one that didn't, you know, scale up just to simply meet demand. They insisted on using, um, you know, the best quality ingredients and things like this and, you know, using very good brewing processes. And uh, that really stood them in good stead over the coming years. So the Hitachino Nest beers, to fast forward on a little bit more, these, the, the Hitachino Nest beer 
Rio Brand was founded back in 1996, but the idea had come a little bit before in 1994, and the OWL logo um, came after, I think they'd used a stork and they also used some different types of fish but they eventually settled on the OWL logo for their beers. But this happened around the time that the alcohol laws were relaxed in Japan and uh, I think it was before 1996, it was only breweries of 2 million litres or more that were actually permitted under the law. But then after that, you had all the, the whole Jibiru uh, brewery, the local beer brewery, boom in Japan. Not all of them survived, only the best ones seem to have survived. Um, but they imported their brewing equipment from Canada. They got their brewery together in a month apparently and they've gone on to become one of the most highly decorated craft breweries in Japan. In 2008 they moved to a new brewing house which they've called the Nukada Brewing House and that's when they started all their exports. I believe I first saw their beers in like 2010 or something like that. It was around 2010 or 2011 that I first encountered Hitachino Nest but you know after they got their new brew house the exports started to go. But this brewery is particularly interesting because they use um, a mixture of European beer brewing techniques along with some of the old sake Japanese uh, brewing techniques as well so their beers become very unique uh, because of that but the brewery currently produces uh, beer sake and also shochu which is made from one of the byproducts of, uh, of Japanese sake production. I have to say I'm not a great fan of shochu but as you've seen on the channel I absolutely love my Japanese sake so I need to see about reviewing some of these uh, some of the sakes from the Kiyuchi brewery that's definitely something I want to do in the future. I've never been to Ibaraki prefecture or Tohoku so hopefully in the future you can see some of them and um, but quite recently as well they've been experimenting with uh, producing wine as well they imported different vines from France I think it was Merlot and Chardonnay so you will actually see some wines from the Kiyuchi brewery these days as well but a really interesting company this one as is the case with many of these little Japanese breweries a lot of the times you know the sake company has passed down the various generations of the uh, the family and as I've told you in other videos it's quite common that you get a sort of parent company in this case the Kiyuchi brewery and you also get the beer brand which in this case is Hitachino Nesh you get the same with like Mino beer for example there's AGI beer incorporated and then the beer is sold as, uh, as Mino beer it's, I've not come across any other countries where that tends to happen actually it does tend to be that the the company name is the the brewery is, is the name of the beers as well actually so Japan's a little bit unique in that regard but um yeah that's all you really need to know about the Hitachino Nest uh, beer and the Kiyuchi brewery for the moment if you want to learn more of course you can check out the website there's a nice little history section for you on there um, and they've got a list of all the different beers that they've done as well I think there's around maybe 15 or so in the regular range some of them are seasonal actually some of them will appear you know for a couple of months out of the year and um, but quite a lot of the beers that they do are seasonal my favorites are probably the red rice ale and um, i've had the espresso stout but i've never reviewed it i need to fix that and um the other one was the um the Japan Classic Ale, that's a really interesting one where they've added a little bit of sort of sake rice and things to the uh to the beer as well so yeah that's definitely one that you want to check out but pretty much from this brewery pick a style that you like and you will get a really interesting beer out of it in my opinion so um yeah check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and of course you can check out the rate beer and untapped pages to see all the different things that these guys have done so um yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then so as i told you before i'm not sure exactly what style this beer is for the moment but we'll um you know, we'll, f we'll find that out when we taste it, I'm sure. I know that there's been two different versions of this. One was an Imperial Pils and one was a Belgian um, Golden Ale. And I'm not sure exactly which one this will be. But as you can see, the label on this beer is absolutely lovely. I mean, that's really pretty cool, actually. Very kind of Japanese looking in a lot of different ways. I'd love to see their sake breweries and things like that. You can see up on the top there, I think that is, you know, the little town that they're from, the Naka. It's a little kind of skyline of the town, if I remember correctly. Or is it, I think that might be the old Saki Brewery brew house, actually. I've never figured out what the letters on these beers actually mean. I've never uh, been able to figure that out. It might just be a kind of short, like a, you know, because in, in Nipponia, Japan, of course, ancient Nipponia. So basically this beer means like ancient Japan. It's almost more like a kind of Latin name, actually. I, I don't know if Nipponia was the the Latin name for Japan, but there you can see the owl is on the bottle cap of this one. Definitely going to keep that bottle cap, although I already have a few of them. 
but um, yeah, really nicely presented this one. So 8% ABV, it says on the back here, brewed using revived Japanese Kaneko Golden Malted Barley and Soriachi Ace Hops. This delightfully golden coloured beer has a distinctive citrusy flavour and a rich complex taste of these Japanese origin ingredients. So um, yeah, without further ado then, let's get it out and we will get on with the taste. And I'm really curious to see how this beer turns out actually. Nice little bit of smoke on the opening. One thing I should have said incidentally is that this beer apparently is a 550 milliliter bottle, which is a really unusual measurement actually. When I got it, I thought it might have been like a 650 or a 660 um, or a 700, something like that. So yeah, 550 milliliters is quite unusual for um, for these kind of for for a Japanese beer to be sold actually. So um, yeah. As you can see with this one, this has poured a lovely kind of rich ambery golden colour. There's a solid finger and a half of a frothy, I would say cream kind of lightly beige coloured head. And just going by some of the aromas that are coming off this, I suspect it's going to be a Belgian sort of blonde or Belgian golden ale, something like that. So yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of this one, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head. If I shine the light through this, it is definitely a sort of medium amber colour there. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see there is a degree of haze to this one, um, which again makes me think that this is maybe more a Belgian beer than an Imperial Pils. A Pils would normally be pretty clear, although in fairness you can get some hazy Pilsners actually. Um, but yeah, a nice looking beer this one, uh, and it should be really interesting. Nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of the appearance when you consider what styles it could be. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. Oh yeah, no this is definitely this is definitely a Belgian beer. Uh, a Belgian style beer I should say. Yeah, that smells lovely. I mean that you can really get the malty notes in this one and it's very interesting actually. I mean, um, you know, it's it's got th this beer in the sort of malty and yeasty qualities. It has some of the nice kind of. It really has some of the the kind of lovely doughy bready yeasty things that you expect of a Belgian yeast strain. I mean, it's got a little bit of that kind of smooth white bready wheat. It's got a little bit of a kind of more doughy quality, and there's a little bit of biscuit in there as well. There's definitely some sort of slightly caramelly and biscuity notes coming out of this beer, but underneath it actually smells a little bit more kind of rustic and and sort of woody. Um, it, it's got, an, the, the, the grainy notes that you get out of this are very very unique. It's almost, it's almost a little bit like porridge or something. Um, you know, that's that's really interesting, the, the aroma, I don't eat porridge very often actually, but the aroma that you get out of this it is almost a little bit kind of porridgey or, or something like that. It's almost, it's not quite oaty, um, but it's got some of the smoothness of oats. Um, there's something oddly, oddly familiar about the grainy notes in this beer, but it's lovely. I mean, the aroma of this one really is very, very unique. And I mean, it's not often that you're going to come across a beer that's brewed with, um, you know, Japanese hops and uh, and Japanese malts. I'd be curious to know whether it's a house yeast strain as well. Um, but that's lovely, I mean, the aroma of this one, um, to kind of describe it, it's a little bit... Um, back home in Clipmanninshire in Scotland, we have um, a distillery quite local to us, and it always gives out this smell in the air from the spent malt grains. It really... it all, the, the aroma that comes out of this beer and the, the grains that are in here, it really smells very much like if you smell the spent grains after you do a home brew, that's what this beer smells like. Um, it's got a lovely, there's a kind of, there's almost an, an element of brown breadiness to it. It's got a bit of a porridgey quality. There's a few sort of, kind of, I don't know if woody is the right word. It's almost like a teeny bit like leathery or tobacco-y or something like that. Um, it's, that's a really unique aroma, I have to say. I think this is a lovely, lovely smelling beer. Um, you know, if, you, if you've watched the channel before, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of like Scotch ales and Doppelbox and you know German Dunkels and stuff as well. I love big malty beers. And when you come across things like this, this is really interesting. But yeah, um, a mix of kind of Belgian character in the malt base and then some really interesting kind of subtleties 
from that Japanese malt. What was it called again? The Kaneko Golden. Kaneko Golden. Yeah, that's one of the things you always do with Japanese. You always mix up one or two of the letters and it gives you a completely different word. Kazoku, family. Kaizoku, pirate. You know, Japanese is that fiddly when you're trying to learn it. Most difficult language I've tried to learn, hands down. Um, but yeah, um, that's a lovely aroma that I could sit and smell this all day but we won't linger on it too long. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, um, there's definitely a little touch of earthiness to this one and that kind of complements the grainy notes of this beer quite well actually. There's a little touch of a herbal quality in there, some nice quite bright floral character to the beer also uh, and I would say in terms of the green side of the hops it's actually very well balanced. You've got a bit of earthiness, you've got a little bit of that kind of floral brightness there and you've also got some nice grassiness too and all three of these are kind of coming together. There's not one of them pushing any of the other ones out um, if that makes sense. So a very nicely balanced green side of this beer. Um, on the, the fruity side of things it's really quite citrusy. I mean the, the Soriachi Ace hop from what I remember was a really quite zesty, um, it's somewhere between a, a kind of lemon and orange, it's somewhere in the middle of that, it's quite a, it's a very zesty citrusy hop and I mean you get a little bit of that kind of lemon kind of quality out of it but it's quite unique, it's not lemon like Centennial might be, um, there's definitely an element of oranginess to it and you know, almost like tangerine or something. It's it's very unique. I mean, you can't really attribute it to any particular fruit, I don't think. But it's a very, very zesty, citrusy hop, actually. This is definitely a beer that's kind of testing my nose, and I'm sure it will test my palate as well. So if you do get the chance to try this one, I highly recommend that you take a little bit of time to uh, to take to enjoy the aroma of that, because that's a very unusual aroma, in my humble opinion. Um, but, yeah, if I was comparing this to other beers, I would say it's definitely got some of the Belgian yeasty qualities. It almost smells a little bit like an English bitter, in some ways. Some of the, the grainy notes and stuff you get out of it, but then it's got a kind of more American, zesty, citrusy, hoppy kind of quality to it. So it's a really interesting aroma that comes out of this beer, I have to say. So, um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then, and see how we get on. So like I said, this is my Hugmanay, um, or New Year's Eve beer review, so a very happy New Year to all of you guys and thank you for your support over 2019 and I hope you continue to enjoy the channel over 2020 and I hope that you uh, have a great time with friends and family and don't get too drunk on New Year's Eve, although I know that sometimes can be a little bit hard. But this one is the Ancient Neponia, an 8% Belgian golden ale with, um, how do we say it again, Kaneko golden malts from Japan and also some lovely Soriachi Ace hops. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanjian Skull, Kampai, Happy New Year 2019 whenever it comes for you. 2020 I should say. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's a really, really nice beer. Um, in terms of style, I mean, I was saying that this one, it definitely smelled a little bit more like a kind of Belgian beer. Um, it's not a Pils, it's, it's, more, it's definitely an ale, this one. Um, I'd be very surprised if that was a Pils. Um, but yeah, this, it is nice, this. It's, it's very, if you like the graininess of English beers, you are going to enjoy this one. As I've told you on the channel before, I'm not a great fan of like English bitters and things like that. For me, English beer is all about like the porters and the stouts and sometimes the brown ales as well. Um, but I've had some really interesting English bitters from the likes of Sweden and things like this. And this one is kind of it. Kind of reminds me of those actually. It reminds me of the um, oh the, the name of the brewery's gone right out my head now. Um, now is some Ongbrugery, the the bitter Baderu bitter, that's it, and the Urubro bitter from um, Urubro Kulta uh, Brewery as well. It really this one in some ways really reminds me of those two beers. Um, it's like a it's got the graininess of an English bitter, but it's a lot smoother and it's a little bit more like a kind of New World version. It's definitely got a little bit more of a like an American type hoppiness to it. But as I say, the hops in this are Japanese. This is a really interesting beer actually. I'm a bit disappointed in myself that I left it so long to uh, to try this one. But yeah, this gets a thumbs up from me. I really like this actually. Um, 
try this if you get the chance because there's there's not many beers around. I mean, I've only reviewed 2,000 or so beers, but there's not many that taste quite like this one. So, um, yeah, let's, um, let's try and break this flavour down a little bit then. So, middle of the palate, you can feel some really nice kind of um, grainy, bready malts there. They blank at the middle of the, the tongue. Um, the graininess that comes out of this, it's almost like slightly toasted, but at the same time, it's almost like it's kind of coated in caramel or something like this. Like it's really like a toasty caramel, grainy quality. That just blankets the middle of your tongue. It's almost like if you eat, it's maybe not quite as sweet as that, but it reminds, it's kind of a little bit like the flavour you get from a frosty when it's been in the milk for uh, the frosty cereal when it's been in the. Um, the milk for a little while, that's the sort of grainy qualities that you get out of this one. It's almost a little bit like if you eat Cheerios, um, if you eat Cheerios dry as well, it, it, the, the graininess that blankets the middle of your tongue is a little bit like that. But yeah, it's a really very nice beer. There are some bready elements to it. I mean, underneath that graininess, you might pick up a sort of uh, brown bready kind of quality with this beer. Um, I'm not sure if it's brewed using only these barley malts. I wouldn't be surprised, going by how prominent they are in the flavour, I really wouldn't be surprised if it's a single malt that they've used in this. Um, um, but if you go into the middle of the palate, you'll pick up some nice kind of brown sugary notes. That's the booziness coming out of the beer. Um, there is something, I mean, these malts, they're complex in themselves, but there's not a level of complexity to the malt base in this that makes you think, right, maybe there's a few different malts in here. I'm pretty sure that this beer, it will, it'll either be that they've used a pale malt base and then they've put these malts in to kind of supplement that, or it will be brewed using purely um, the Kaneko Golden. Because the, the, the malt, that malt itself has enough complexity to carry the beer, um, but it's not coming across as being madly complex, if that makes sense. Um, so, as I say, in the very centre of your palate, you've got a little bit of a brown sugary note there. It comes across as being a little bit boozy, but then as you come further out from the centre of your palate, it starts to become a little bit more sort of biscuity. Um, and then underneath that, the further you go into the aftertaste, you get those kind of grainy qualities that I was talking about earlier on, like a sort of dry Cheerio type flavour. But you can feel there is a little bit of a slightly brown, bready kind of note under this. It's almost like a, a little bit like a German rye bread in some ways, but not quite as, uh, maybe a little bit sweeter than German rye bread, to be honest. The further that you go into the aftertaste, it's, um, you do get a little element of woodiness out of this beer. The kind of tobacco, leathery sort of notes that I was picking up in the aroma, they don't really come out in the flavour at all, in my mind. It really is more of a kind of bready quality that this beer has, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's a lovely beer. It actually, in some ways, it, it really, there, there are a lot of characteristics about this beer that just make me think, you know, English bitter. And, um, but at the same time, it does have a little bit of um, a kind of, how do you say, it does have a little bit of an almost Belgian-y quality to it. But I mean, in the aroma, the belgian -y notes that you pick up are a lot more prominent than, than they are in the flavour. Um, I don't know. Maybe this. Maybe in some ways. I don't think it's a. I don't think this is a pilsner. I think this is more of an ale. So that's one of the interesting things um, when you get beers like this that they are. They do make you think about what style they actually are. But for me, there's a good little bit of an English bitter quality to this one. I can see why some might say it could be an imperial pils, but it's a bit more too ale-like in the malt base um, for me to be a pilsner style beer. And the Belgian -y notes. That I was picking up in the aroma don't really come out in the flavour. That's the interesting thing about this. Mm. That's nice, but yeah, the malt base in this one, that's where the main focus of your attention should be with this beer, actually. It's, it's really nice. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the hoppy side of things. I think I've described the malt base as much as I can, really. Um, in the back corners of the palate, there's definitely a little bit of earthiness there. Not overpowering or anything like that, just a little touch of it. Almost noble-like, German noble hops um, in its kind of in its base, but like you see, um, Japanese Soriachi Ace. But as you come further forward on this one, it does get a little touch herbal. 
Uh, and you know, the way the earthiness and the herbal qualities in this beer come out, that again makes me think a little bit like English traditional beer. Um, if English bitters were more like this, um, you know, I probably would enjoy them a little bit more to be honest. But as you come further forward on the, um, the side of the tongue there, you get a little bit of a nice floral aromatic kind of quality. Um, at the, just at the front corners of your palate and as you go round the very front curve of the tongue it's that little bit lighter and grassy then behind the front curve of the palate you've got that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters come out of the beer and like I said you know this one really is showing off the Soriachi Ace quite nicely it's quite a zesty citrusy hop and it's, it's difficult to place exactly what fruit it is but yeah um, it really is, it's quite, it's almost a cross between orange and lemon. It's like if you gave an orange the zestiness that you would expect from a lemon, it's that kind of, that oily bubble behind the front curve of your palate is pretty much dominated by that flavour. Um, but the further you go into the aftertaste for this one, you get some of the kind of boozy, almost brown sugary type notes coming out of this. Some of the graininess pushes its way out as well and you've also got that nice floral kind of quality on the side of your tongue too. The sort of earthy herbal qualities um, that this beer has do give you the impression of an English ale almost. Um, but in terms of style, it's difficult to place this one. I could see why some would say this is a, an Imperial Pils. Um, it did smell a little bit like a Belgian beer and it does have some of the boozy qualities you might expect of a Belgian beer but it doesn't have in the flavour the kind of yeastiness that you would normally want. So this is a beer I think that's just very unique. You can't really place it within um, any specific style but it to me there's a bit more, it's actually a little bit more like an English bitter in some ways for me but a very good and sweet English bitter and that's, you know, the English bitters as I say, it's a style that I'm not overly fond of but you know, regardless of what style it is, I think um, Hitachino Nest and Kiyuchi Brewery have pulled off something really interesting here. So if you want a really unique beer, um, you know, have a go at this one and just see how, see what you think. I think in some ways the Imperial Pils is a bit of an underrated style. I really like my German and Czech lager style beers and, you know, to find something like this in Japan, I think is pretty cool. So if you come across this, you are going to get something that's quite uniquely Japanese in my opinion. So um, yeah, on to the mouthfeel then. I think we've spoken about the flavour long enough. Um, this one's quite, um, it's quite full bodied this, but it's at the bottom end of full bodied for me. Carbonation's really smooth. I would say the mouthfeel of this beer is oily rather than anything else. Um, it's in terms of hoppy bitterness and things, I think we're talking maybe about, it must be about 40, maybe a little bit less, it's about 30 or 40 IBUs this one, you're getting a good little bit of hoppy bitterness from these Soriachi Ace hops. I don't know how, I think the Soriachi Ace is about like 10% alpha acid normally, something like that. So it's not the biggest alpha acid hop you're going to get, but it's still got a pretty good kick to it actually. Um, so yeah, a little bit of bitterness to this one, um, but the malt base is really it has a little bit of graininess. It doesn't really get dry though. The graininess that you get out of this beer is really quite sweet. And as I say, the malt base really leans towards that sweet side of things, but you do get a bit of boozy warmth out of this beer, and you've got some really nice fruity characteristics to this one. It's not, um, it's quite an oily fruity character. It's a little bit zesty in some ways, but mainly it's quite an oily, fruity character that comes out of this. But overall, this is a really interesting beer and very, very unique. So I think to review this one as my Hogmanay beer for the new year 2020, um, I think, you know, I think this was a pretty special beer to review. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This is an awesome beer and one that I definitely recommend that you have a go at. Pardon me. Mm. So for when it comes, a very happy new year 2020. I hope you guys have enjoyed my reviews over this year and you will have many more to enjoy over 2020. I've got a nice interesting German beer to review for you tomorrow on New Year's Day, so I hope that you enjoy that review as well. A very famous brewery, but one that I've never seen before actually, but definitely cool to return to Hitachino Nest after quite some time. I've really enjoyed reviewing this beer for you and I've enjoyed communicating with you guys across 2019. So may, um, many happy returns to you guys and I hope that you have a great New Year's Eve and uh, a very happy 2020. So let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Kiyuchi Brewery 
Fury and the Heated Chiro Ness. Like I said, hopefully I can review one of their sakis at some point soon. But until the next time, slang it just now. Check out my social media and I'll catch you guys very soon. This one is the Ancient Neponia. An 8% sort of gold nail of some description with uh, Kaneko Gold and Japanese malt and Soriachi Ace Japanese hops. A lovely beer from Hitachino Nest at the Kyuchi Brewery in Ibaraki Prefecture here in Japan. Slanjutsu, Kampai, and a Happy New Year 2020. Cheers.